Hello, today I'm going to be talking about an updated prototype of the cone winder I've been working on. So this is the drum that I've decided to go with. This is the portion of the cone winder that moves the yarn back and forth, and I'll be showing you how that works. The cone holder, and it's fairly similar to the way it worked last time. I've made a few minor updates, but it basically works the same. I do think I'll make other attachments. I know that people said that they want a way of holding bobbins for weaving machines and some other things. And I, I think that the, you can do those. I don't know that the bobbins you hold for weaving machines you could make work with the drum here, but you could certainly make it work if you were willing to hold the yarn in your hand. So that's like maybe an extra accessory I'll have, or perhaps I'll make it just 3D printable. I'm not exactly sure. I'm really focusing on the automated cone winder first, just to have sort of a focus right now. This is the current version of what holds and tensions the yarn. I'll show you how this works. I'm thinking about either using this system or potentially a pulley, like you would see more like in a sewing machine bobbin tensioner, but I would appreciate some feedback. I, I do already know that I'm gonna make this bottom piece even a little bigger. This is already bigger than I had last time, but I think that it makes sense to make it this bottom portion a little bigger. It'll be easier, although it already works pretty well. The, the hooks aren't the final hooks, but uh, they work for prototyping. I guess I do have a question about sort of how this is going to work though for the community. So I kind of wonder if it's better to have this kind of a device that sort of clamps onto a table and you put the base over here and then the yarn kind of goes from there to the um, cone. The advantage of this is that you can clamp it in different places and make it different distances. So there's advantages uh, for that in terms of flexibility. It's also probably a little easier to manufacture this and ship it. The other option, though, is to create some kind of like um, a wire um, harness that would maybe you would be able to slot into the machine and then it would kind of extend out in this way and then it would have some mechanisms for adding tension to the yarn. And the advantage of that is you wouldn't have to set up two different things. So the base here has holes that will allow you to clamp it down to a table and then you'll clamp this to the table so you'd have three clamps that you have to go to a table. Whereas if I had the wire that came out and allowed you to tension it that way, then you'd only need two clamps and you wouldn't have this extra piece. Instead, you'd have a, a wire piece that um, sort of plugged in. I'll, I'll show how this one works and then, but I would like feedback on whether people are would prefer this or, so we'll call this the, let's see, we'll call it the clampable uh, yarn tensioner uh, or would people prefer the wire yarn tensioner which plugs into the base here. There's pros and cons to each one. I'm not exactly sure which one I prefer yet, but if people want to give me some feedback on pros and cons as they see them, that would be super helpful. I also have, this is just a an electric EO Wheel 6 circuit board and there's a, a motor on the underside here now. I haven't really mounted the circuit board, but obviously that would get mounted on the inside and you'd have a, a dial I don't know if you'd need this switch. Maybe this would just be a power switch. You don't need to reverse directions on this like you do with the electric EO wheel 6. I'll show you how these springs, I have a spring on each side though, and uh, I'll show you how those work in a little bit. So I think that's most of the pieces. Yeah, there's a lot of things that aren't, that don't fit together perfectly yet, and that's totally fine. This is still very rough prototype stage. But uh, it is working now, so that's a definite interesting, uh, or that makes it more interesting and people can provide better feedback then. But this just sort of slots in there like this. Getting the belt onto the motor pulley is a little tricky right now. I have to probably open up this plastic a little bit more on this side. Okay. Keep this on the outside so I can get to it. Uh, let's see. the. Actual cone portion slots in. I keep switching these hooks, how they work. I forget how it slots in, but it slots in pretty easily, just like this. And it's a little rough with the 3D printed version, but uh, 
that's what it does. So the yarn, oh, I should have put this on there first, but the yarn, here, let's take off the drum. Okay, so the yarn has to go under the drum like that. And then you can just wrap the yarn around the bobbin a few times. Okay, and now the springs, the way these work is you just put them through the hooks like this. One on each side. And what that does is that tensions the cone to this drum so that when uh, the motor's actually spinning the drum and then because they're tensioned together, that will also spin the cone. And this, um, so this is the tensioner and it just clamps on to the table like this. And then to give it an amount of tension, you just sort of wrap it around these hooks and you could actually wrap it more around the hooks if you want more tension. Um, like that. Uh, before I was just using sort of this amount of tension. I haven't really tested too much yet, so I'm not sure what the best tension system is, but that's sort of how this system works. So this tensioner is sort of what I was talking about before. So with this system, you can re you have a lot of flexibility on like, do you want the drum this close or do you want the drum that close? And I think different kinds of yarn might want it slightly different. I haven't done testing with different kinds of yarn yet, so I'm not actually completely sure about that. But this system is certainly more flexible. I don't know if that flexibility is good or not yet. I guess that's something I need to test. But the other alternative is to have like a wire system that plugs in, comes out the front. I've seen this on other things. It has a few loops in it to do the tensioning and then goes and plugs in on this side. And that would mean you wouldn't have to set up this and this. So this has a clamping mechanism, but I really don't seem to need the clamping mechanism because this drum is pretty heavy and that weights down the machine some. I think maybe when you start doing uh, lots of yarn, you may want to um, clamp it down. So then you'd want to move this over to the edge more. But just for this simple test, I'm not going to bother with clamping it down. It stays in place pretty well. So now I'm just going to plug it in so that I've got power going to the motor. And at this point, uh, well, let me show you how the drum works a little bit before I show you the motor portion. So the way this is set up is that the motor is gonna spin this drum and then the grooves in this drum are really intelligently placed uh, such that the yarn follows them. So. You do need to get it set at about the right distance and you need to get the set tension set about right. But all of that's pretty easy to do. And once you do that, as the motor spins, the yarn is gonna move back and forth like this. So I'll show you how the motor works in just a little bit. I just wanna make sure that I've kind of got it set up at a good angle for this test. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to start turning on the motor and we'll see how it goes. So this is set at a pretty low speed and the belt's not very ideal. So you can see it start, the belt is starting to slip right now. So in the previous configuration I was having some issues with the belt slipping so I switched out the uh, drive belt for a, a smaller circumference drive belt and I, that, that seems to have fixed the issue right now but the final solution I think will be for this device to use a larger diameter belt. So this one I think is like, it looks like about one and a half or two millimeter diameter. Uh, probably bump that up to like three millimeters or something, but uh, I don't have a pulley for that right now or the belts. So I'm just going to keep using the same uh, diameter belt. I also found that lightening the tension a little uh, to something like that configuration is kind of giving me enough tension. So Let's try it with these settings and sort of see how it performs.
So that's working pretty well. Let's go to maximum speed. Now this, I think I can get the final version working at a higher speed with the new belt and uh, better gearing, but right now on this prototype, let's just see how fast it will go. That finishes the bobbin. I mean the cone. So we've got a cone now. Um, let's take off the cone and see what it looks like. So yeah, it wasn't quite centered. So that's something I'm definitely going to have to improve. Maybe I'll have to make the cone a little bit longer. Although there seems to be a little on this end, but that's obviously not acceptable. But uh, this is the second yarn of, uh, second cone that I put yarn on. Obviously, the cone could get fuller, but that was a full ball of yarn that I put on, and uh, this is what we got. So there's definitely some need uh, for improvement here, but I'm pretty happy with this being the first working prototype of the uh, cone winder. And if you've got any feedback or suggestions, uh, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching.